Tonight, I want to introduce you to one of my favorite rules in all of AP Calculus, and that's Lahapetal's rule. And this is basically, to summarize it, it's a method we're going to use to evaluate limits that result in indeterminate form. And here's a classic example to st kickstart things tonight. You'll notice if I just substitute the zero right away, and sometimes just a direct substitution does work on these functions, we end up getting 0 divided by 0. And this is the classic indeterminate form. Now, cl technically, there's other forms of indeterminate forms, like sometimes infinity over infinity and other things like that. But we're going to put all of our focus into this 0 over 0 indeterminate form and how we're going to overcome that. Now, this is certainly not the first time we've ever seen the indeterminate form. Um, we've done a lot of other limits, and but we were always fortunate enough where we were able to algebraically manipulate the equation to get ourselves out of indeterminate form. Maybe we were able to factor and cancel things out, or, or maybe we were able to rationalize or clean up a complex fraction or some other algebraic manipulation. And, but what do we do when those options aren't available? And so here's we're going to get right into our definition here, and we're going to say given... Let's just assume that we're given this limit. Notice x is approaching a finite number. I'm going to keep emphasizing that this is a finite number. Um, and we've got a numerator. We've got ourselves a denominator. In that case, if, let's say if, the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals 0 and the limit as x approaches c for g of x also equals zero, well then by golly, there's our indeterminate form. And anytime we have the indeterminate form, we can now say that Lahapetal's rule is now applicable. Is applicable. And that's one thing we want to focus on a lot is when is it applicable, when's it not applicable? Because if I mistakenly jump the gun and I try to do Lahapetal's rule on a limit that's not indeterminate, then by golly, we're, we're at risk of getting a wrong answer. Okay, so if that's the case, then we could say the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x is equivalent to the limit as x approaches c of f prime of x divided by g of x, or g prime of x, I should say. So basically, we're going to derive the numerator, we're going to derive the denominator, we're going to treat them as if they're separate functions, so we're not doing quotient rule, and then once I get done deriving both the numerator and denominator, I'm going to now resubstitute my c in for x and evaluate that limit. Now, I really wish I could have taught you Lahapetal's rule, you know, back at the beginning of September when we were doing all of our other limits, but you'll notice Lahapetal's rule requires that we've seen all of our derivative rules before we could really go over this rule. Again, I think worth noting in our notebook here, a couple, uh, one monster point of emphasis here is that we're not using quotient rule on any of these problems. And it's, it feels kind of funny, but we're treating the numerator and the denominator as if they're you know individual functions. They're separate functions and we're just deriving them individually. And another really valuable part of Lahapetal's rule is it can be applied as many times as you need it to. So you might take the first derivative and then still get indeterminate. And then you just reapply it again and again and again until you get out of indeterminate form. So let's see if we can go back and revisit that first problem that I introduced the video with, with this uh, limit as x approach 0 for sine of x divided by x. <clears throat> now the AP is real big on, first of all, establishing the conditions first that allow us to use La Hapetal's rule to begin with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that the limit as x approaches 0 for sine of x is indeed 0. And we could say the limit as x approaches 0 for the denominator is again zero. And all I'm doing is I'm substituting a zero in for those x's and the answer turns out to be zero. And therefore, because we have indeterminate form, we're now allowed to use La Hapetal's rule. And I, I know a lot of books have that little uh, hut above the O. That's embarrassing. I don't know what that's called. So now we could say that the limit as x approaches zero for sine of x divided by x is really just the limit as x approaches 0 for cosine of x divided by 1. And now, once I substitute my 0 now, I just get 1 over 1 for a value of 1. So that would be the intended height for this function right here. Let's try another exciting one. Again, let's confirm that La Hapetal's is applicable, because this may not always be the case. And we'll see a bear trap before the video is over, that's for sure. 
e to the 2x minus 1. And if I substitute my 0, e to the 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. And of course, if subbing a 0 into that denominator also gives me 0. So now we could say La Hapetal's rule does apply, and the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the 2x minus 1 over x is equivalent to the limit as x approaches 0 for 2 e to the 2x. So I derived my numerator, now I'm going to derive my denominator, substitute my 0 now, and my answer is 1, and I'm all done. It's really, really quick, smooth, and just a wonderful rule. Uh, just to make sure we're feeling good, I think here's a great example. Let's go try this one on our own. Go ahead, hit that pause button, see if you can show the necessary requirements to establish the fact that La Hapital's rule is applicable, and then go ahead and evaluate it. All right, now that you've given it a shot, let me walk you through some of the work that I got. So I, I walked myself through the numerator, got zero, and I walked myself through the denominator and got a limit of zero as well. So therefore, I concluded that with this indeterminate form, La Hapital's rule does indeed imply. And so I derived my numerator to get 2x minus 3 plus 3 cosine of x, and then I derived my denominator to get positive sine of x. But something fishy happened right there. You'll notice that when I substituted my zero now, I got another indeterminate form. So even though I took the first derivative of both the numerator and denominator, I still got zero over zero. And so we'll say La Hapital's rule applies a second time. And there's no limit to how many times we could apply La Hapital's rule. So I derived the numerator a second time, and I derived the denominator a second time, and now I'm going to try plugging in the zero again. And let's see. Uh, sine of zero, zero. So I got two over one. Yeah, so we do indeed get a nice numerical answer this time after two applications. So just a real quick bear trap to show you before we finish up tonight. So again, I'm going to tell you right now that I think I use, if this is a finite number, I use La Hapital's rule um, you know, 99% of the time on all the old AP questions I've ever seen. Now, notice I keep saying finite number. If this was the limit as x approaches infinity, now I'm switching gears and I'm going to go do uh, what, what I like to call a power fight, and we're comparing the dominance of the numerator to the dominance of the denominator and so forth. But again, in this case, I'm thinking La Hapital is right out of the gates because that's finite. And as I analyze my numerator for 1 minus 3 cosine of x, let's see, I got negative 2. Okay, so even though the denominator, let's see, in this case, sine squared of x, does give me 0, what I'm getting here is negative 2 divided by 0, which is not La Hapetal's, okay? And so in this case, I would simply say the limit does not exist because I've got a finite number divided by 0, which is always does not exist, and that, I would be done right there. That would be my final answer. So I hope you enjoyed La Hapetal's as much as I did, and we'll certainly put it to the test tomorrow.